Hey, what's up, what's up, everybody? Thanks for coming back to another season of The Kickback, man. Today, we have a very special guest blessing our platform. we like to welcome Javin Daniels to the show, man. What's up, man? Man, what's going on? Thank you for having me. Man, for you sure, know, for, sure, for sure, for um, sure. Yeah, I'm Javin Daniels, Daniels Real Estate Group. Uh, we do a lot of things in Charlotte, but most importantly, connect with solid brothers like yourself. Man. Um, I, it's been a blessing. I appreciate that, man. And, and before we even get started, man, like, y'all know I got to just run down this man's resume, man. He is a, a, a family man. He's a really genuine good dude, man. He is the CEO of Daniel's Real Estate Group. And he's also the, the Charlotte Ambassador, National Board of Directors of Kicks for the City, man. So we're going to get into a lot of that today, man. Allow him to tell his story, how he kind of, you know, made it to the place that he is in his life. Uh, but, man, I, I'm just a excited to, to be interviewing him, man. This is a friend of mine that, man, we actually met in the barbershop like yeah. years ago, man. With, with Mike, Mike Larry. Mike Larry. Shout out Mike Larry, too, by What's the way, What's going on, man. bro? He's doing good too. For real, I had talked to him in a minute, man. He's in real estate, doing commercial real estate. Oh yeah, man, so, yeah. See, and see, that's law, man. Mike, we're gonna have to get you on the show for real, for real. But um, like, man, the, the barbershop is one of them places for for black men that we just kind of come and, and can be our authentic selves. But you meet like all the diasporas of, of a black man from from the the top guy in the boardroom to to janitors to drug dealers to to men of faith. Like everybody has to go there, so. Like when when I met Javin, man, like when I first met him, I always knew he was gonna be a good dude. Um, I, I seen his hustle, I seen his ambition, and to kind of see a lot of this coming to fruition now, man, I just want to say I'm proud of you for that. Man, real, appreciate real. you, proud of you too, bro. For sure, definitely. for sure, definitely. You, you know, you inspire me on so many levels. Just you know, always being a family man. I remember before you mm. even, even married, you know, before even the, the baby Leia. So. Um, I was like, I need to inspire to, you know, be like that. You always have positive game, positive information to give. And it was just a, a genuine spirit because I had just moved here, I want to say. True. You know, I knew Mike, but I really didn't know anybody else. And you were that one, you were that person that kind of like, let me show you the ropes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had lunch and stuff like that. I invited you to Kicks for the City a yeah, few times. Sure. You incorporated your your sphere of influence to it and made it what it was. So I appreciate oh, that, bro. Man, that's 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 love, man. And I think that's that's something that's very big, man. Just amongst us as African American men, man, always making sure that we connect uh, and, and try to do what we can for one another, man. I'm real big on that. Um, so I mean, I guess we could just hop in right there, man. Like you know, again, you were saying that when we first met, you had just got to Charlotte, man. Like. Kind of give us a background about who Javin Daniel is as the man yeah. first before we kind of get into uh, who you are as like a businessman yeah. and so on and so forth. No, for sure. So I moved here to Charlotte in uh, 2013, February mm -hmm. 2013. So I'm coming and embarking on my eight years of being here. Oh, man. Um, and I mean, I moved here from St. Louis. I went to school in Oklahoma. Um, I actually moved here. I was chasing a, a, a lady, a female, <laughs> you know? and a lot of people are doing that. You know, a lot yeah, of people move to different this. locations and places just because they're chasing somebody or wanting to be right. in a relationship. And it did, it didn't work out. But I was actually speaking with her yesterday. She's in real estate too, True. Um, and so we probably gonna link up and do some things. But Dope. you know, I moved here just because of just the the prosperity that I saw it in mm. Charlotte. You know, it was a, it was a growing city where I'm from. It's kind of stagnant. Right. Uh, a lot of people are. If you're there, you're from there you don't move you don't leave mm -hmm. and you know my group of, uh, of friends we all went to college we had the blessings to you know the to be able to go off to college and then everybody saw one by one leaving yeah. and it was my turn and you know I just picked Charlotte as one of those places to plant my roots and it's been good ever since bro that's dope yeah it's that's been dope. good ever since so I mean I, I love the support that people have given you know just because you're not from here doesn't mean that you can't make it home absolutely and everybody has made that southern hospitality which I'm still used to a lot of my, my a lot of my family's from like Memphis and Mississippi mm. so that southern feel is still is still here for sure true true yeah. yeah man like the thing I love about Charlotte man is it's one of those cities that's growing man like from the banking to like all our industries, man, they're just like exploding. And you can even see it, or well, before COVID, like how the traffic was starting to increase so mm -hmm. much. And I'm, we're probably gonna get into this too with real estate, um, just starting to expand as well, man. Like I, I really truly love this city. Me and my wife were talking the other day, like, would you want to be anywhere else? Mm -hmm. Like I can genuinely say no, bro. Yeah, like I sure. think this is the the place, the perfect opportunity to do what we we're trying to do, man. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I, I love this city, and I guess we can kind of talk about like that as well man like when you came in i know you used to work you know in corporate and you've managed to you know 
escape out the, the out the trap for lack of a better word yeah man. uh so talk to us about that process of that like how you came in got established but moved in, in, into doing your own thing yeah so i came in in the financial industry i worked with mm -hmm. wells fargo um i was you know, I, I never had it all figured. I knew I wanted to be a business owner, but I really didn't know what. I had a passion for real estate, um, but I didn't think I was gonna be doing real, uh, you know, residential sales and stuff like that. I really just wanted to invest, build up a community, do community development, mm -hmm. and that'd be it. But I'm getting towards that, but you know, it's, it's processes, it's blocks you gotta put in place to, before you get to, the, to your spot. Um, so yeah, I mean, I started with real estate probably I think it was 2015 okay I was working for LPL financial I actually got laid off mm. um, but I was still doing full-time real estate I was doing full-time property management and I was working full-time with with LPL financial. Hold on, hold on. I don't want like the audience to gloss over that yeah. you just like <laughs> rung off a lot of stuff that you was doing at the time like re repeat all those things that you was doing again so when I was working I got into when I was working at LPL I got into real estate okay took my license and just jumped in ahead first the company mm -hmm. that I came uh, work with Lynx Realty Group still love Tony my broker in charge she's actually from East St. Louis where I'm originally from okay so it's kind of like that that connection ah, I got you. she had a little uh, branch of property management as well as residential sales so you know me just being ambitious and stuff like right. that I grew and with the help of her and a lot of other of our support team I grew that from from 12 properties under management to 100 properties under management wow. right while wow. I was still working full wow. time and then I was also in my sphere of influence because we were doing kicks for the city which we'll right. get into um, I positioned myself as the first time home buyer realtor, right? So I was getting all the, our group of people to buy their first homes. So I was doing that full time. That was busy. Mm. That was busy. And then I was still having to go and clock in from eight to five. Man, so how, how did you like manage to like hold, juggle all these balls at once, man? Like this is a lot of like, a lot that you got on your plate going from 12 to 100 properties mm -hmm. along with the other endeavors that you got. Like talk to us about just that time, like the, 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 the pressure that was on you. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a lot. And to be honest, it stopped being a lot up until last year, mm. to be honest with mm. you, you know, and it was one of those things that we could talk about, like I had to really focus and right. get focused because right. I was doing a lot. I was making money, you know, traveling, doing all that, but I wasn't like giving my all in 100 percent to something. Mm. Right. And then, you know, I think Steve Harvey said the best, like whatever your passion is that's mm -hmm. burning inside you. Mm -hmm it's never gonna leave you, you know right. what I'm saying? You're gonna be 65 saying, oh, I wish I wanted to start this business yeah. and all that type of stuff. So you just gotta go and do it. You know, right. you have to jump off the porch. And I was lucky enough to know I was wanting to leave. Like I stopped coming to, to work, like, not stopped coming to work, but I was like, when I'm driving to work, I'm like, why am I speeding and rushing to get to a job I don't really want to be in? You know, so you. let me give myself enough you time. You didn't have the same enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, you know, and I'm sitting in there and they talking to me and I done just made so much money on a deal yeah. that I closed which has covered my whole sitting here for 30 you know 30 yeah. hours or 40 hours that week and i'm like this is just not it mm. but i still wouldn't have never jumped off the porch unless i got laid off mm. like when they told me that and brought me into the office and was like yo you know we're gonna lay you off wow that was like a relief mm. it's like you're not mad you know yeah. like everybody else they escorted out the building it was like the sign you needed it was the so, sign i needed yeah i got you, got they, you. they let me go and walk around say my goodbyes to everybody yeah. you know i was in there an extra hour you know right, they're like right. you're not mad i'm like no i'm not it's just a blessing for me to be able to do it and i know i talked to my mom mm. and her first reaction was are you gonna start looking for something else right and i'm like no nah, i mean I'm, i think i'm good mom like i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing mm. and i'm just gonna let god you know take the wheel and I, I haven't looked back since. Man, you know? I, I hear a lot of things in that, man. I hear like tenacity, persistence, faith in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, along with like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I can sense that you weren't really phased because you were prepared even financially, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, no, 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 I wasn't. No, oh. Cause I was, I was young, I was spending money. Oh man, you know, so I was, that's, that's even more faith that you got. Yeah, in, I, in, I wasn't, in the plan. I probably had maybe a, a a month of savings, Ooh. you know what I'm saying? But I was just like, I'm just gonna keep on doing. I know I had a consistent income wow. coming in with property management gotcha. that covers the bills, but as far gotcha. as like six months, a year of savings, no, I did not have wow. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, and I still, and I, I didn't have that until last year, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. True. Yeah, no, for sure. Man, that's huge though, man. Like, I love hearing stories like this, man, because like, man, everybody's success story is different man and i kind of want to even dig into yours a little bit more because it's so unique man like now because and, and you go from 
you know, having the the financial corporate experience to being laid off to saying, you know what, I can do this on my own. Like, what does that process truly look like? Because you said you went from going to 12, 10, 12 properties to 100. Like, how did you build that type of yeah. portfolio? I mean, it was really just connecting. You know, I always wanted to be an investor. Mm. So my initial thing was, let me connect with investors. Okay. Right, so I mean, it was kind of like, me figuring out my own lane. I, I don't have a mentor. Uh, mm. You know, Tony, she was my broker in charge and she was kicking game to me and things of that nature. Right. And it's like, okay, how can I expand on what she gave me? You know, mm. just having that, that natural hustler's mentality. So I just expanded on it. I started going to REI meetings, the meetups and stuff like yeah. that. And just kind of getting yeah. connected with people that were in the same lane. Mm. I knew what I wanted to do, trying to talk to developers and like, what was that, six, seven years ago, right now, I'm just getting my first development thing, but it's wow. always been in the works of me just wanting to continue to do it. Asking a lot of questions. Asking just questions. being in the environment to, to kind of soak it up. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, a lot of people, older people have kind of like taken a liking to me because mm. they see my passion in mm. it, and they've kicked game to me. Like, That's real. real estate, you take a six, a six week course, you yeah. get your license, and then you're out there. But as far as like the knowledge that you get, it's about being hands on and for mm. people to come in and kick game to you. That's real. Yeah. That's real, man. And mm -hmm. I, I would even advise anybody out there right now watching this, man. If y'all, you know, are inspired and want to connect, like, man, hit this brother up, man. Like, yeah, he's a good dude, sure. man. Like, it. I think oftentimes, man, people just don't even have the courage to reach out and ask mm -hmm. because they think that, hey, I, I know I don't have it all together right now. I want to get to X, Y, and Z spot before I go in. Like, it doesn't have to always be that deep. Yeah, sure. yeah no. <laughs> like, just express that you have a passion for something and they may even be able to guide you to a place where, or to a person that can help you get to that place that you're trying to think you need before you go to the next level. Yeah, I just got off the phone with my cousin. He was, uh, he's 28, living in Hawaii. They on lockdown, yeah. and he's been every kind of sales position. And he just wanted to pick my brain uh, yeah. as far as like what real estate. And, and when we finished the conversation, I was giving him everything that how I started and what I'm doing. But the real thing was, it was his why. I said, why do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't have a why other than money, yeah. if that's the only thing moving you, like people aren't going to latch on to you and gravitate towards yeah. you. You know, they got to know that you're genuinely in it for their best interest, mm -hmm. whatever you do. Mm -hmm. You have to be in it for their best interest. So, yeah. I, I think that's a perfect segue, man. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your why. Like what, what drove you to this particular business as opposed to, you know, making money in stocks? So, yeah. which, I mean, you may have part of your portfolio. But yeah, like, Tesla been doing good to yeah. me, man. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Yeah. Um, I mean, my why is just to be able to help, you know, going and coming from East St. Louis. And if you don't know about East St. Louis, you know, it's very... It's poverty stricken, yeah. you know, it's blighted, um, and it's a lot of abandoned buildings, right? Yeah. There's not a lot of job uh, security there, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Just a, a typical ghetto, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, I always had a vision for like, how do I help my, my community? How mm -hmm. can I help my community? And I was like, who owns, I, I look out the window when we're riding, who owns this building that's yeah. dilapidated and just sitting mm -hmm. here? So, real estate always intrigued me, and so when I was Coming in, I'm like, okay, I want to do real estate. I want to. This is what I want to focus on, and that was pretty much it. Just getting into it, and then it started with just re residential sales. And it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. like how do I teach people financial like education with real estate? Mm -hmm. Like everybody needs to buy a home. You know, I know a lot of us were. I don't know if I'm gonna be here long term and things. Yeah. Then you look up, you're here ten years, and yeah. you haven't. You've and, been renting ten years, and right? No equity in the home. Yeah, no yeah. equity. So. It was like, okay, how do I, how am I able to like give people the game? Mm. Because my grandmother, I, your grandmother, yeah. like they have, they've owned their houses 40 years. Yeah. Whether they've lived in it their whole life or whatever, they, mm. they've owned it for so many years and it's a generational thing. And I'm really big on building generational wealth Absolutely. and passing on legacy, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do that through real estate. So, Absolutely. you know, I'm not selling houses. I say, I don't, I don't sell houses. I give you informative information for you to make the best decision for this house. If you like it, it it's less on you. I'm not gonna trick you into buying nothing. For sure. For yeah, sure. so for me, it's just about giving people the game educational and now I'm doing that with also my um, my agents. You know, I just started bringing mm -hmm. agents on board. I just got my own, this brokerage firm has been here since October. I just started right. in October. Um, and now I'm kicking game to my agents to kind of do that same model mm -hmm. and I'm helping them grow their book of business mm -hmm. and helping them, you know, however I can serve them to get to where they want to go in life. And yeah. that's that's influence. That's that's really taking the position of going to the next level, being the boss that 
you really want to put yourself in a mm-hmm. position to be because I mean when you're trying to scale a business like you can't be everywhere at once so no, having those people in place that you trust that share your vision that that share that same mutual interest of your why like it's a beautiful thing man mm-hmm. and I I kind of want to curtail just a little bit because something stuck out to me you was like you want to kick game and kind of help people with that process man so like what knowledge or information would you give to that that person that is ready to do it but really just don't know where to start like what 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 does that process look like for them just reach out to me you know uh i'm gonna guide you from step one from you may not even like you said they want to start they don't know where to start you know and that's just about the education we don't we lack a lot of things when it right. comes to buying a house, financial, credit, all of that type right. of stuff. So, you know, I partner with these, I partner with credit um, credit repair people, I partner with lenders, just that are really passionate about educating people, For sure. you know, and just reach out and we can come with the game plan. I'm gonna sure. get from start to finish, you know, and I'm, I'm not one of those, and my company is not one of those, like, we're gonna sell you something and then you won't hear from us, uh, us again. Right. We're a family, you know, right, like, right. my people are family, my clients, it's always your sphere of influence, so if I'm, mm-hmm. if I'm helping you, you, you family to me. For so, sure. of course, I'm gonna call you, text you, and do anything I can to help you. You know, I had one that we just closed on, and um, they were kind of fearful of the market, you right. know, and I was just like, listen, be fearful of the market because yeah. when the banks start tightening up on their lending and stuff, it's for, it's for a reason. So Absolutely. when they start tightening up, you need to start saving more. Right. Don't go out there and we get in this house, which you can afford it. Don't go and buy yeah. two cars. Like let's yeah. live, let's do it how the bank, the big banks do yeah. it, you know? And live below your means. Yeah, live below your yeah. means. And, and they listen to it and like, okay, I appreciate that. And it was like, I'm coming from a genuine place. I'm not coming from a realtor aspect. I'm coming from That's a real. genuine big homie place. This is what you need to do to function. So with, within even saying that, like if someone is looking at their position now, in addition to reaching out to you, would you say that their main focus should be credit? Should their main focus be like savings? Like what, where in this like- It's, uh, all, it's all three. You okay. know, it, it, what, what are the three? So it, it's credit, it's debt and savings, mm, right? Okay. You know, you, you want to make sure your credit is above six, 80, okay. you know, 660, you can still get a house. Right. But for you to really like with the interest payments and all of that, like you want to be 680 and the better, right? Okay. Um, but you can still get it 640. I've okay. seen the lowest 640. Okay. Um, you want to have that debt, like debt to income ratio. You want to have like 30% of 30% or below for your debt to income for debt, right? Mm-hmm. So that's living below your means. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't make $6,000 a yeah. year, I mean, a, a, a month. Yeah. And, you spending forty five hundred on living expenses, yeah. like you you hustling backwards, and yeah. then you gotta eat. You want to go out to restaurants and stuff like yeah. that. So like, my bills are low. Like I mean, yeah, for so. me personally, my bills probably like twenty two hundred a good. month. You know That's what I'm good. saying? Like I paid off my car. I'm still yeah. driving. I could. I want to get the truck instead of buying a truck. I got it, uh, an assistant. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> paid off my car. I got an assistant. So I'm paying her, which is you know skyrocketing my business. But right. it's just like discipline and just that education to know to know those things to yeah do. yeah and i think a lot of that with in what you're saying just comes with discipline man like we get so motivated by what others think sometimes that we don't stand on our own strong enough to mm-hmm. say you know what i'm good enough in this you know this ten dollar hoodie yeah because the person on the inside of it is really what mm-hmm. you know is what matters right or you know going along with the cars or whatever lifestyle you know flex culture piece you want to be a part of which hey again if that's your thing that's your thing i i'm not yeah, down stunt, in it stunt, yeah, man, stunt if been you want there, to, been yeah. there, done that however i always preach 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 this man because it's so important man take something off the top first like pay yourself first and like for savings not mm-hmm. pay yourself to go stunt pay yourself first for savings and investing and then pay your bills and then do the rest so i mean yeah if you can't buy it three three times over you shouldn't be buying it yeah i, I my, my my rule is a little bit like <laughs> yeah no Akon, I, I got that from akon if you can't if he can't buy it 10 times he, yeah he I, don't buy it yeah that, that's kind of <laughs> yeah that's that's his rule and that's that's aggressive you know and i think that's still something good to for model sure. off of for, nah, sure. for sure but it's yeah just save money you know i haven't always been that way and i mm. once we go into like finance or whatever if you want to segue over to it like 
I didn't pay taxes for two years. Mm. Cause I didn't save, I didn't have my business together, I didn't do mm. accounting, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And like a lot of agents, we were just taught like, okay, just make sales. Yeah. None of these brokerage firms tell you or put you in the game with tax people mm. or how to start a LLC and you know, like things that you have to pay, you mm. know, to, to get your tax yourself as an S corp, start paying yourself so you right, can get right. Nobody's telling you that type of stuff. So how did you learn that process, right? Cause I mean, again, we're all about trying to give value and there may be someone there that's you know, in the real estate game or wanting to get into it to avoid some of these same, mm -hmm. um, these same steps. Like, how, how did you, or where did you go to, to get that specific information? It was a little bit of a, like reading and learning. Okay. You know, just, and I did the steps, but I still didn't understand the steps. Gotcha. Right? And then, so then I got with my homeboy, George, George Achapon, where okay. uh, uh, Makes Sense to Me, Capital Wise. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Melon yeah. and Money, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, me and him started linking up and really kicking it, and he really put me on game, you For know sure. what I'm saying? I, and he knows, I tell him all the time, like, seeing him and his systems and his process, mm. being a financial advisor, just how he runs his business, it was like, okay, now I need to step my game up. Sure. So those people closer to you, yeah, right? It, it challenges you, it pushes yeah, you. Your yeah, net, your network is your net worth, right? Sure. So if you don't have people like that challenge you to do the, the better things, then you're not going to succeed. And to me, even like, I, I listen to what people don't say sometimes. Like the vulnerability that you have to have to open up to your partner to kind of tell these things so that they can help you. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are so prideful and e have a big ego sometimes that they don't want to let people in no, not to be able to help. Yeah. Bro. Like, and to me, that's like, again, that's hustling backwards too. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, for real. Like, if somebody, you know, even in America, we're so prone to. Uh, how you doing? Uh, how you feeling? Uh, I'm I'm good. Yeah. I'm still telling you, I'm messed yeah. up out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like real. I'm I'm doing bad. That's like, real. <laughs> I need some help. You know, and I think we have to get to that point to like, we just got yeah, stop sugarcoating stuff. Yeah. You know, somebody you could be on your about to commit suicide. You would say you good, just yeah. genuinely, just like out of routine. Out of routine. Yeah. It's like no, I'm doing bad out here. Yeah. You know, and I need help. And so I mean, I don't have a problem mm. with asking for help. Mm, that's real. Uh, I'm able to to take constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, me and my lady, she's big time, and like I can be like, nah, you don't know nothing, just mm. to be prideful. But like, no, help me. You know, help yeah. me get to where I need to be. And so it, it is what it is. And that's a beautiful thing, man, because I see you and your family on the on the Instagram all the time, man. It, it makes me it makes me smile just because I know like how far <laughs> my man it came. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. But for like real. for real, for real, like man, to see it, man, I always salute it because like man, having a, a strong woman in your corner, man, to like have those people that you can bounce ideas off of that's going to challenge the ideas mm -hmm. and not just go along for the get along like man it's a beautiful thing man so like man tell us a little bit about that man like how, how's that process been for you man man it's, it's definitely been a transition but it's been a, a, a great transition you know and I always yeah. say behind behind every man is a stronger woman mm -hmm. right so you know she definitely pushes me and since we've been together I've done relationships and you know not no knock to any of my past relationships mm -hmm. it pretty much probably failed because of me you yeah, know understood. but it took me to like get to like what do I really want and what do I really mm -hmm. value and maybe for me to focus in and lock in um, to really be able to pour into somebody mm -hmm. else and help somebody else right um, so I mean, we were good, you know. We go through our own our situations, mm -hmm. like you know, every other couple, and Absolutely. we trying to figure each other out on a daily basis. Uh, she has a little daughter; it's our daughter, you know. Uh, I play, you know. It's my. Uh, I would say that would be my stepdaughter once right. we get married, and um, but it's been good, man. She she elevates me, and I can see the change and the growth in me just from being with her. Right. It's a word for that, man. It's called maturation, man. Okay. Like for real, for real, bro. Like. When, cause when I look back at it, man, we, you know, we got similar paths. We mm -hmm. used to be out here, man. But I look back at it, man, and no one turns the leaf in one day. No, you know what I'm saying? No, like no, it, no. it takes time. It takes learning. It takes experiences. And, and to your point, like knowing yourself and improving yourself, man. I didn't realize I had so much trauma that I brought to the table. Like, 100%. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and until real. you really take the time and really start working on yourself. You're not going to allow that to manifest into a relationship that allows you to truly be the leader because your partner can trust you and depend on you and vice versa, right? So, I mean, like, man, addressing some of that trauma, like, for me, you know, I started going to therapy in 2020 along mm -hmm. with COVID and all that, man. It's been beautiful, bro. Mm -hmm. no, like, for sure. oh, man, I, I strongly advise it to anybody, man. It, it's one of those things that grow you because, you know, again, being in this position as a life coach, 
you know, hurt people can't help people. No, for sure. You know yeah. So you got to take care of your own stuff before you go out trying to help people, man. I, hey, I strongly advise anyone yeah. to, to, to seek out, you know, a, a, an unbiased opinion that, that can help filter through, through anything, man. And then you got to have people to pour into you because, I mean, if mm. you pour into everybody else and your cup empty, how are you going to continue to do that, right? Man, so listen. you got to figure out a way to rejuvenate yourself. Bro, I was talking to my therapist and she was telling me, like, through COVID, like she's seen a spike in her clientele and the vast majority of her people have been pastors. Mm hmm for sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. was like, 80% of my clients now are pastors. I can, and I you can. think about that, right? It's like, yo, these are the people people go through in, go to in these times. Mm -hmm. But like, who do they go to? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, except for God in prayer, but obviously like you need like someone else to kind of, yeah. you know, filter some of this stuff through, man. So I thought that was very enlightening when she said that. Mm -hmm. No, that's real. That's definitely real. So, I mean, I always say, I mean, you know, life is a journey, you know, it's, and as my the late great Nip, you know, um, it's a marathon. Absolutely. You know, Ooh, you just got to you got to go day by day for sure, you know, and, and it'll come. Everything will happen. Mm -hmm. Everything will manifest how it's supposed to as long as you stick the course. The thing is to never give up. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. That's real. That's mm -hmm. real, man. So, man, we've talked um, I mean, we talked a little bit of real estate, we talked family, we talked finances from a high level. I do want to dig into uh, the newest venture that you've kicked off, man, Daniels Real Estate Group. You're the CEO, you're the leader of the organization, man. Just kind of give us like, man, a, a high level of like what you're focusing on to grow your business mm -hmm. and like how you're planning to scale um, in this Charlotte region. Yeah, so I mean, Daniels Real Estate Group, you know, my main thing is own, unite, revive, you mm. know. Uh, I've had this and it's been my baby for like 13, 14 years. Okay. I've had that, that, break, that phrase. Okay. Uh, our right, right. So I'm all about the people. I'm all about helping. I did not peep that. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> I did not so, have dope. <laughs> yeah so it's strategic. It's like yeah, it's, it's ours, right? So own, unite, revive. I want to help people ah. to own whatever it is. If it's real estate, if it's mm. business, just own what you what you have, That's right? Ball. You know, yeah. yeah. I want to unite people, you know, through the ownership, so we can all come together and be united, and then let's revive what it came back to my community, develop and really like. Re mm. Let's revive our culture. That's you real. know. So own, unite, revive is the is the game plan, and um, you know I've been blessed to have four new agents that come. Right. They really want to you know gravitate towards what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about branding, um, and I mean it's just. It's been a blessing, you know. I really, I've, mm. I could say I've strategized for it, but it's no rhyme or reason. I've just kind of stayed the course. Right. You know, right. I, I'm, I've helped over, you know, hundreds of clients. Right. I've done, you know, over you know, 20 million in sales. I've done, you know, I did wow. the property management with 100 right. properties. So I mean, it's just really now I have the a development that I'm working on with a, a group of friends that I've known for a minute. Um, and we're building 14 townhomes in the university area, wow. right? Which I talked about earlier when we talked about development. So, you know, we have our hands in a little bit of everything. But I, I think the real thing is for us to just be organic with the brand Absolutely. and really be intentional. And everybody that I bring on, I'm asking you, what's your why? You know, and, mm -hmm. and it's always been, I want to do generational wealth. Yep. I want to help, you know, create a legacy. I want to own my own brokerage firm in the next five years, me right. and my sister. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be able to help and be a part of that. I don't want to be like, oh, I just want you to sell, 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 right, yeah. sell for me. Like, just work for me, just work for no, me. It's like, like set up a platform for yeah, you. Like, yeah, like, like if we okay. really gonna unite and revive, yeah. it, it means making people independent. Exactly, so think, you know I what I'm saying? Like big home, I want to put people yeah, on and right. help people do whatever they want to do. And just, that's what satisfies me and I know and I would just like gave my all to serve people, mm. you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I mean, business is going really well. That's you dope. know, this economy, has taken us back a little bit just with yeah. the pandemic and things of that nature. But um, sales are at an all time high. I read an article that the past 14, this is the highest sales has been in the past 14 years for pre existing homes. So let, let me ask this question, man, because I mean, you, you raise a good point, man. And just to kind of talk through real estate, and I know that these are pre recorded, so it may come out a little later. But as we talk about 2021, foresight, um, where the real estate market is going. For that person that is looking to buy their first time home or even upgrade and go to their second or third home is now a good time to buy should we wait it out like what, what, what's some of the what you've been reading and what you've been seeing as far as mapping out this, this year you know so inventory is very low right now right. not a lot of people are selling mm. there's a lot of people 
who want to buy yeah. right now. But you know, of, of course, there's not a lot of inventory out there, so it's driving the prices up, right. supply and demand, right? Um, I always say if you want to buy, if you need to buy, you can buy, right? Right. But the thing is, when you buy, don't go over your price range. Mm -hmm. Don't go over your budget, right? right? Don't. You can get pre-approved for four hundred thousand. Right. You can get pre-approved for six hundred thousand, but it's like, what can you afford? What do you want to spend a month? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I tell people to go into it backwards. Like, don't say, how much can I get pre-approved for to the lender? Right. Say, no, I want to only spend $1,500 a Absolutely. month. What does that pre-approval price I look like? I had it already said. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what does that number look like? So if it's only 300000 now you know you, know that what you, you got to worry about. Yeah. Right? So um, that's the biggest thing. I think it's definitely a good time to buy as long as you manage and maintain, right? right. And know that, and I tell people, we're gonna buy now. I'm expecting a dip in the market just because of foreclosures, right. people losing their jobs is just inevitable. And right? that's, that's why I was going next. I'm yeah. glad you brought that yeah. up. Keep going though. So it's inevitable. So you can get a deal now, um, or you can wait and get a deal, right? right? Off the strength of somebody losing their situation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, everybody needs a place to stay. Yep. You need clothes and you need food. Absolutely. Those three things you can't go wrong Absolutely. with, right? So you have to be able to withstand the curve and be able to be comfortable saying that, hey, my equity will go back up even though yeah. I bought at the hype. I'm good because I can afford it. You yeah. know, even if something happens to my job because I had that savings that we talked right, about, right. I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna be good and I'll, and I'll catch it on the back end, you know? True. No, I like that approach, man. And even just looking at like what interest rates are right now, because I mean, they're at lows we haven't seen in a while. I actually mm -hmm. just refinanced a, a little while ago, yeah, less than a month too. ago, man. And like, I'm saving tons of money, like over a hundred thousand in interest over a 30 year loan. So like, I'm really excited about that. So like far as interest rates perspective, where do you see them going any lower? Do you think they're probably going to remain stagnant? Yeah, I think they're going to stay. Yeah, they're going to stay here for a while, you know, okay. a year or two. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm an expert, but I don't know. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, no one's a, a, a fortune teller. Like yeah, that. yeah. But uh, they're going to stay here. And the only reason interest rates are low is because of the economy is, is, excuse my language, is shot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, they yeah. want, they're encouraging people to buy yeah. and spend. You know, I just read an article Biden's trying to do the $15,000 down payment assistance again. Oh, really? Right? So, you know, if that comes, if that's passed, that's going to mm. bring an influx in buyers as well man that that would be huge yeah because I mean, we had an eight thousand uh, dollar buyers incentive back in what 2011 like mm -hmm. when i first came into the uh, market and like bro that did yeah one like that was like the uh the jump start i yeah, needed no, yeah and, so and, and like if that comes back you yeah. know that's going to happen but people are going to so new construction is going to be big we mm. need more homes because we can't if people aren't selling mm. which i understand is scary why would i sell i'm gonna get my equity for sure yeah. but I'm gonna have to buy at the height of the market, so it's kind of like it's gonna eat up my equity. Right? I, got, I got DHI, uh, I got Dr. Horton and Toll Brothers in my in my stock portfolio mm -hmm. for that very reason. Yeah, no, mentioned. yeah, no, new for construction. That very reason. You got to build. You know, you have to yeah. build if people aren't selling. But I still think people should sell. It just depending on what the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm about to start a campaign, which I just thought of with. Um, my lady, her mom, uh, the mother-in-law, is like, what can equity do for you? Ooh. Right? That's going to be the brand campaign. Yeah, what can like equity that. do for you? I because, like, like it's, I, I feel good when I have somebody, a friend, that maybe I didn't even buy them, to help them get the first house. Right. But I'm helping them sell and to see that they have eighty, ninety thousand yeah. dollars worth of equity. Yeah. They paying off some school loans. Yeah. They paying off some credit cards. They putting it on some investments. Yeah. Like we, we maximizing that equity. Mm -hmm. And right now is that time if you do have equity in a home, mm -hmm. if you're just gonna sit and wait it out, you're probably doing yourself a disservice. Yep. Start from the bottom again. Take a hundred thousand yep. dollars, maybe rent for a little bit, <laughs> invest in that business that Listen, you wanted to invest in. I, I got a friend that hit me up the other day and we were having this same conversation. Uh, he wants to start a food truck and I I, I was giving him the equity play game. Mm -hmm. I mean, because again, equity, equity is a power play. It's not a, a something you want to go in and just grab for the sake of going to buy a new chain. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, not at all. It's like, leverage. Like you, you want know? the leverage that to make more money, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, nah, I, I love equity plays, man. Yeah. Um, now nah, that's a that's a great point. I really like that slogan, by the mm -hmm. way. Thank you. Um, so I mean, we talked about it from a residential perspective. What about an investor perspective? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, from 
a, someone that doesn't necessarily need a place to live, but they are looking to come in, maybe buy one or two rental properties this year. Like, what advice would you give to that person um, in, in this year? Um, they're out there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's definitely out there. These foreclosures, unfortunately, you know, it's going to happen. I'm not going to say it's, it's going to be big as 2008 when it right. happened. Well, people are going to lose their homes, unfortunately. Right. They're going to try to stick it out. But there's going to be opportunities to purchase homes for a little bit lower than, right. than expected. And those are going to be the things where, because people are still going to need a place to stay. Absolutely. You know, people are going to do apartments because we've already just seen the pandemic has just told us, like, right. we need more space, right? So. If they can't buy, they're still gonna have these single family homes that they wanna to rent out, right. right? So single family homes are gonna be a big, huge influx in the rental market. Mm. So it's there, you know, you can do it. Don't buy off of emotion, really do the numbers, right. you know, make sure that you're getting it at a low and a fair price. Right. And so that the numbers, you know, take care of itself because rent is, is super high right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, because I mean, we're definitely uh, looking to increase our portfolio this year from a rental perspective, man. And I've I've been mm -hmm. homework, homework, homework. But it's like you get to that point, and this is me just being transparent. You get to that point where it's like, pull the trigger or find a better deal. Pull yeah. the, and like you keep going back and forth to mm -hmm. the, and it becomes analysis paralysis at a point, certain yeah. point when it's like, all right. You just gotta. You have to know. Your, you have to know your numbers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So once you know your numbers, it's not. You don't have to think about it no more because you're like, okay, that meets my criteria. Right. Right. And so I have budget analysis. I have, you know, buy and hold calculations. I have fix and flip calculations, and I have all of that on my platform to like, if you plug it in, if that number works. Right. Well, what else are we thinking about? Yeah. You know. You that know. Makes sense. So that's kind of what it is, and I mean, I think there's things out there for you. Work with wholesalers. Work with your family, your sphere of influence. You know somebody that may have just lost their husband or something like that. Right. That they no longer don't want to be in the house. Right. Here's right. your opportunity to be like, hey, you know, right. I think about, I, I can buy it. I think about buying. I got a few people. And it want becomes to buy. a win-win because a now win -win. you're helping them get out of a situation that they no longer want to be in because number one, they maybe can't afford it. Number two, they don't even want to be reminded mm -hmm. of their husband so much in this situation. Yeah. And I, I get exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's. Yeah, that, that's a good game, bro. That's yeah, really so game. yeah, it's all about your sphere of influence. Now you can go and cold call, you can door knock, right. you can drive around, but just ask people that you know yeah. about their situations, and you'll probably get led to something. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's that's a real good game, man. So I mean, we've talked investors, we've talked residential. Uh, what about commercial, man? Like, cause I'm sitting back looking at this market right now, man. It's so intriguing because. I've been working from home all year, which mm -hmm. means a building uptown Charlotte has been empty with employees all year. You know, you go to places like the Epicenter, it's like man, a all ghost of, town. It's probably like three or four businesses in the, right. in the Epicenter right now that's like, still... How do you think the pandemic like transcends or I guess changes the commercial game from a long-term perspective? Uh, I mean, for me, it's... You have those new investors. You have those new entrepreneurs that are mm. starting up. I, I know three or four people that are like I'm trying to find some commercial space because mm. it's so cheap right now. Yeah, you know, and it's yeah. only going to get cheaper if, if the pandemic continues. Right. Um, but I mean, it's unfortunate for the people that have lost their businesses right. because there are a lot of small businesses that can't keep, mm. you know, and with and with staying. So um, it's all about just having a new, who would know who would have known that we had a pandemic. Yeah. Who, you know, like. Yeah. I never thought yeah, we was came going out to of do nowhere, it, bro. right? So I mean, it's it's only so much you can save and prepare for. Yeah. Who's to say like I didn't think my business like I started my business independent. Now this was that's real. It's funny because about this time last year, me and my wife were just sitting watching TV, like CNN, I think, and like they had just shut down China. We were like, yeah, yo, that is nuts. Mm -hmm. We did not thinking that it was gonna get like that over yeah, here. We're just no. thinking that's their problem. Yeah, like, no, for sure. Yo, what China got going on? Man, they wilding away. Yeah, and it's <laughs> but two months later, March come and boom, and, like, we, and it's been like that. And I mean, commercial is good. You just yeah. gotta have a good business plan. Now, when you're doing your business plan, yeah, for sure, for you sure. need to say like, oh, can I prepare for a pandemic? Any like specific um, areas that you see may succeed or that the commercial space may gravitate towards, like maybe restaurants or like boutiques or I guess any, any type of space. Yeah, you know, it's really it's really interesting. Charlotte is built on small businesses. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of big major companies in yeah. Charlotte when it comes to restaurants and all that type right, of stuff. Right. It's all small businesses. So I think that boutique still, that vibe is still mm -hmm. relevant in Charlotte. Right. Um, it, I mean, I think you just really have to, you can do anything you want to, okay. right? You can 
I would say the small boutique, something small and just organic and just genuinely felt mm. will go a long way in Charlotte. Okay. When you do something that's really big and things of that nature, I don't feel like it gets the same love. You know? Gotcha. Charlotte Agenda is good for pumping out the latest and greatest new yeah. local spot, right? But and it's like a lot of that come and go. Yeah, a lot of it. I mean, it does, but I mean, I've seen a lot of them that have been here and like, how do they, everybody mm. eats here. Like, yeah, when sure. my mom came That's to visit, she like, everybody. This is an eater's town. People do love to come and try she to like, find y'all food. work out, y'all shop, and y'all eat. Yeah, that's real. That's what we do in Charlotte. Yeah, that's real. You know, so, I mean, I think everything, I know, I'm looking for resident, I mean, commercial space. Okay. Just because I know it's cheap and it's affordable. I'm paying at the WeWorks uh, uptown, and it's just like, I'm paying for a two, Two places. Like the two. same thing you get there, you can get like right now because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah so uh-huh. I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs are, are really, you'll be surprised how many people are trying to get commercial space. Yeah, that's great game. Mm-hmm. That's, that's super great game, man. Yeah. So I mean, not to switch gears, but to, to kind of just switch it just a tad, man. I know you guys have been part of something special, man, over uh, the past few years, man, called Kicks for the City. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want you to kind of delve into that a little bit, man, because I mean, th- I think this kind of highlights a lot of your philanthropic side as well, which mm-hmm. I know is very, very important to you. Yeah, for uh, sure. So, like, yeah, just just tell us a little bit about what you got going on there. Yeah, so Kicks for the City, I mean, uh, my cousin Justin Johnson, he's in L.A. now, he's in Chicago, but uh, he came up with the idea okay. back in 2012. I think we were fresh out of college, mm. uh, or you know, close to being. I think yeah, we were fresh. I don't know. I mean, I've been gone for a long time, but um, he came up with the idea to help some homeless people from a relationship that he had with the homeless guy in, in downtown St. Louis. You know, he was working in the financial industry. Uh, met a guy named Montreal who was probably a little bit younger than us at the time. We were 23, 24, so he could have been around the same age or a little bit younger. And uh, he was homeless. And you know, one day he kept running, they kept running into each other. Justin, Mm -hmm. he would ask, you know, Justin for money. He'd give it to him from time to time. And then one day he just stopped and like, I gave him some money, but let me really ask how I can help this man. You know what I'm saying? And then it kind of led from him going to lunch and stuff with Justin and then also going into the alley where he lives. And, you know, Justin said he looked out at his feet one day and just like, those are the only shoes you had. And my trail said so proudly, like, yeah, like he was proud of it, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think in our culture, um, shoes are very like fashion is like yeah. it you know yeah. you get teased you get bullied people you know rob and kill yeah. over yeah, over shoes true. and stuff like that true. so it's really big in our culture and people should have adequate shoes you know yeah. like we should be able to provide everyone with shoes you should have yeah. some socks and some shoes you know that's if true. anything so that's how it was started and our when we talk about relationships and network it started and it grew from just a core of people that we was raised with and, right. and, and stayed in communication with that wanted to be and give back and we went from st louis to me moving the next year to charlotte and him moving to chicago and us saying like let's keep this thing going yeah and then a friend moved to dc you know ashley moved to dc and we had a homeboy move to atlanta like so they so we overall we went to nine cities in total nine cities served over a hundred and twenty thousand pairs of shoes in eight years Wow, so yeah. I mean, I guess with the process, man, like, and I've, I've had the pleasure of coming in, helping out with it, man, helping yeah. try to raise shoes, because I mean, everyone that knows me, I love trying to give back, man. Like, it, it's something that I think we have to do, and mm-hmm. that, that's God's heart. So, and if we really want to be God like, yeah. we have to share the same things that, share passions in the same thing that He wants to share in. Um, so, like being able to see people like volunteer their time to come in and help clean the shoes or you know spray the lights all in and or yeah. just even yeah, just be you know there. about like, it yeah. it's a vibe yeah no, for sure yeah and like when you're thinking about what you're doing like and, and they they say gently warm but sometimes it may be a little bit more you're taking someone else's shoes that they've had on and it's in your face and it was it's just yeah. An interesting time, man, because people really go in humble themselves that that are a part of this, mm-hmm. and like I just want to like hear some of your experiences or some of the, the the best experiences that you've had or seen like through this, like just from a transformation perspective. Yeah, I mean, for us to see, for me to just to see it grow from coming from St. Louis, us raising five hundred pairs mm-hmm. of shoes to like each other year, it's like, okay, every city has to raise 3,000 pairs of shoes. Right. And that's hit our goals every year. Yeah. 
uh, it, it was a humbling experience. Just even like for volunteer night, it's a lot of stress that goes in towards yeah. collecting shoes. And I'm begging for shoes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was begging for shoes for a long time until we got partnerships with the athletes. But I still have a partnership with them, and for sure. I love them, their family. Until we started being able to just get donated shoes. But yeah. a lot of it comes from like just people wanting to give, and, and we had to really spread the love and the the mission behind it. Right. And it's so self-serving when you see, and I guess that's the right word, when you see like the finished product, us on that actual day, mm. passing them out. Like nothing like, compares. It's selfless. Selfless, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, so you gotcha. know, I ain't listen. Nah, I got you, I got you. Yeah, so like, <laughs> um, on that actual day to pass out mm. shoes and to see people, their faces light up, these yeah. kids are like, Man, I mean, one time the Athletes Foot, my boy Shaddy, he owns the Athletes Foots in like 13 stores across Dope. North Carolina. And he, they come and serve every year. You know what right. I'm saying? They'll do volunteer night, they'll give 800, 900 pairs of shoes, wow. and then they'll clean and they'll serve the next day. Wow. And you're talking about the owner. You know what I the mean? Like, get his hands He's dirty. He's getting his hands dirty. Right, yeah, you know that, what I'm saying? That's like, beautiful. Yeah, and we were helping this little kid, this little boy, he had like Dope. this old pair of J's, and he, we took him off trying to help him fit his size or whatever, because right. his mom didn't know his size, he right. didn't know his size, right? So, and his socks were so filthy, yeah. like dirty, dirty, like he might as well not even have shoes on. Mm. And, you know, once we helped him, it's the, you know, keeping it calm and cool, Shady pulled me to the side, like, bro, we giving you socks next year. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, so those are kind of like, yeah, those yeah. big things. Now, they, now they see the need that they, they're actually in the grind. Yeah. And like, yo, hold on. It ain't just shoes, like socks. And then that could turn into underwear the next year. Man, so we had socks, we had hats, we had gloves, yeah. you know. And it just went that's a long probably, way. I mean, probably. one year, and I hate to say it, but, you know, one year we had ran out of shoes. Mm. Size 13. Not a lot of people had, like, size 13s. Right. And this guy came up to us at the end. We were packing everything away. And he's like, y'all have a th size 13? I'm like, no, we don't. We look, you know, for 30 minutes. We just didn't say no. Right. We look for 30 minutes Absolutely. in every box and didn't have it. And something came over me, bro, and it was just like, you were a size 13. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, mm. you know, I looked down, bro, here you go. Boom, gave him wow. my shoes. And everybody was like, that's when it really like grabbed people. It like, you. yeah, it hit me, and I get kind of chills talking about it now. And then people around me, my circle was just like, Mm. This is why we do it. Yeah, you know, that's you gave the shoes off yo, and I drove the U-Haul with no shoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> took it, and I had to go. I that's went an hour without no shoes. But it's like I feel what they go through. You know. But what see, saying? the thing is, you have the opportunity to go home, look in your closet, and put some, and put some more put on, put some fresh on. Yeah. This man, like this was his chance mm -hmm. to just get that one pair. Yeah, that he can wear like bad. That's. That, that's what this is about. Man. Yeah, I'm for <laughs> like, sure. I mean, that, that's yeah. a good story. Man. No, definitely. So I mean, that's what drives me in business. Mm -hmm. And I say I never leave leave with real estate when I started this stuff. Right. I always led with kicks for the city. No. I always led with serving. How can I serve and help people? And then it goes and you, the money comes. But so, it's like you got to help serve people and help people. So how did the partnership start between Kicks for the City and Athletes Foot? Um, with Justin. So he had a relationship with one of the. Um, the owners in in Chicago. Okay. And then gotcha. from there, yeah, from there it was like, hey, how can we get, you know, y'all are helping, but how can gotcha. we do this on a national level? Because we got different cities. For sure. And then Darius uh, Billings out of Atlanta, he's mm -hmm. like over marketing and stuff for the uh, whole nation, for the for national. We sat and met with him. Networking. Yeah, networking, sat and met with him. And then like they tied me into Shaddy and different right. people in different places of these owners. And then they just wanted to be, because it's a franchisee thing, right? right? Gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha. everybody has to want to do it. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of took off from there. And like, it's been good ever since. That's dope, man. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them, by the way, man. The That's Athletes Foot yeah. in Charlotte. We got Wilkerson Boulevard, and then we have the South Park location. And I, I, here's the other piece too that I mean I, I know you guys have done that I want kind of want you to go into. Um, it's actually afforded you the opportunity to go globally as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. 2015, I think 2015 and 2016 we went to Africa. Yeah, man. Talk about that trip a little bit yeah, more, man. So we, I mean, like from both sides, just actually stepping foot on the motherland, motherland, being in Africa, while and then also having a ph philanthropy mindset while you're there like because that, yeah. that's that's two different things that yeah that that's fire no definitely I, i've been to africa once before that okay but this took the cake okay because right? i was like you know i'm south africa we in a condo and right, just right. popping champagne so it was different yeah this one we go to ghana uh, from a relationship with uh solomon he's a, a famous art uh, artist 
out in Chicago. Okay. And he's from Ghana. And so he was just like, we got to do this. And so it, it just came about athlete's foot. We were able to buy some shoes from them. They gave us some shoes. So we went over there with about 500 pairs of shoes. Wow. He already had a village that he was doing art, like um, work with. He was teaching them how to paint and stuff like wow. that. So he was already doing it. Like yeah. a village village. A village village. Like, <laughs> like, this know, ain't like the, the project. No, this, this is, is like, like a village village. The, the girls and stuff walking with the water on their hat, on their wow. heads and like bathing and all this type of wow. stuff. And water, like a village village, no electricity, no, no plumbing. They had electricity, but no wow. plumbing. So Oh, I got questions about that. <laughs> How does the electricity work then? And not even trying to be, I mean, I'm, I literally don't know. How yeah. does that work? So I'm not 100% sure about the electricity, but the huts had like, it did have electricity. Okay. I don't know, I'm not sure. You know, I, I follow Akon with the Senegal thing. I think it lighting up. But I think it was kind of similar to that. Like, mm. you know, I mean, the city of Accra and is very, I love it. It's beautiful, okay. you know what I'm saying? It's still Africa, right? but it's still, it's modern and all of that type of stuff. Okay. And But it's, you know, it's, you could tell it's Africa. Gotcha. But the we went to S and Panier, which was like two hours from Accra. Mm. And so this is like what we would call rural. Yeah, this is yeah, rural. You know, rural Africa, not yeah, rural United yeah. States. Gotcha. And I mean, it was just a, it was a whole different experience. And gotcha. we had a, a large hiccup where customs wouldn't give us our shoes for like three or four right. days. Why was we that? almost didn't pass our shoes. It was just customs. They found out what it was. Ah. You know what I'm saying? They still in poverty, and I don't blame them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like they found out what it was, and they was they was putting us through the ringer. You know, mm -hmm. we calling our accountant back here, like, hey, we need they need forty five more hundred dollars, or they not gonna give us the shoes. Oh, they were trying to like we got extorted. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, exactly. we have we coming yeah. to help. You know, there's no bad yeah. knock about it or anything like that. I mean, it would happen here in the states. Yeah. You know, I I wouldn't expect it any differently. But it's just like you go through those type of things, and it mm -hmm. it came down to like the final day at like four o'clock or no, like three o'clock that we finally got the shoes and we had to race. We had stayed in the village and, you know, right. kicked it and stuff like that, but we didn't have the shoes to give. And like that final hour they gave us the shoes and it was just, we slept oh. in cars like for two days because it, it was two hours back. Ah. So we thought we were going to get them one day, didn't get them. So we like sleeping in the car. Wow. It was crazy, bro. Wow. Like it was an experience. But what, what were some of the main things you learned from that, like just entire trip? Oh man, it was just keeping your cool for sure. Yeah. Networking because there's still good people right. out here, for right? Sure, you know, for it's, sure. it, you have to follow just the systems and how it moves, and then mm -hmm. just like to not, mm -hmm. just to not give up. You yeah. know, just to run the race. Like we didn't think we were gonna do it. We thought like we didn't spend this many thousands of dollars for it to go in vain, and we were just gonna have to leave the shoes with somebody wow. and trust that it got done. Right. And it really happened at the final hour, and it just like. We have a documentary on it that we have never put out, but um, it, it was a very, it was, it was humbling. That's like, God, by the way, too. Oh, like, nothing just but the God. last hour, like that, that. That's just that's a poetic thing. Man, man, we got there. The sun was coming down. We were able to give that's the dope. shoes, and like they were loving it. We played soccer with them. With oh, word. the yeah. first day we played soccer, they didn't have shoes. Some of them had shoes, but you could tell. And then right. now everybody in brand new Air Force Ones. We ah. playing soccer. You know what I'm saying? It, it was super dope. Word. Yeah. So, Word. Yeah. No, I mean it was a good experience. So. We, we've done a lot with Kicks for the City and it, it's elevated me to where I'm at today. I owe a lot to Kicks for the City and a lot of our um, ambassadors in a lot of cities have, you know, fed off of Kicks for the City and sure. really grown in their profession. So everything that you do, you know, I lead with everything that you do now is like you have to have learned it from somewhere. So mm. if you're in that job and you're scared to get off, you know, to jump off the porch. Right. There's so many valuable gems and nuggets that you're gonna need to learn there yeah. before it's time for you to get yeah. to where you really wanna be. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Man, I think that's the perfect way to end, man. Like, bro, I, man, I really do appreciate you, man. Like, this conversation was, man, it, it went to a lot of different things, man, and we gotta get you back, because there's a lot of stuff that we didn't even get to touch yeah, on. But, definitely. like, I mean, Everything you just rung off, man, specifically for the Kicks for the City piece, man. Like, man, I'm proud of everything I'm seeing you do. You know what I mean? Like, from the times we've been able to do lunch and just kind of talk, build our relationship, man. I, I, I wish you the best moving forward, no, man. For sure. I, I know too, you want to continue to succeed, man, because it's just your mindset, mm -hmm. like, where it's at. It's just, it, I, I know, like, you you destined for this. Bro. No, like, I appreciate you, man. And you too, man. Like, sure. it's always been a genuine you know, a respect and appreciation sure. there. And like, I'm looking at you and 
loving the home, loving the family, bro, and just like that's what I'm striving to be, you know, and, and to do as well. So yeah. And my dude, man, I appreciate you, man. If you wanna partake your your uh your handles, where the people can find you, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Um so I'm in the Jab and Daniels on Instagram. Uh Daniels Real Estate Group is at Daniels Real Estate and then group is GRP. Follow us if you need anything. The website is Daniels Real Estate Group GRP.com. Um, and we're here to help you. We're here to serve you any way we can. Okay, and so we try to end on a little positive note, something fun, you know, before we get up out of here, man. So the day is seven for seven. We gotta ask Javin, what's his top seven spots to go to in Charlotte, man? This can be restaurants, it can be parks, it can be like bars, whatever, man. Just the places that he go to unwind and have a good time. Yeah, okay. So, ooh, shoot. Um, we're gonna say Roussin's. It's, Roussin's. A, it's up the street, the sushi spot. Right with Roussin's. Off of Park oh, Road. Roussin's, excuse me. Um, I like Snooze. Snooze, hey, that's a nice little brunch spot. Yeah, little Snooze, little Denver based spot. Pancakes, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll um, rock with them. Flights. Stir, that's a nice little spot over in the South End. All right. Um, Flower Child. Flower Child, okay. Yeah, that's a nice little healthy spot if you want. It's expensive, but it, I mean, it's some good food. These these some nice little, some Charlotte low key socialite spots too. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, Lulu's. All right. Um, Boston, that's black owned seafood, uh, Maryland craft style. Shout out to them. Um, the Gun Range, I gotta go to Blackstone or Hyatt. You know, off, off Wilkinson. Off yeah. Wilkinson, yeah. I'm gotta, not a big fan of Hyatt. Yeah, I, I get all Blackstone is straight. Yeah, I get all mine from Hyatt. It's a um, it's a spot off in Ballantyne, cool, Ballantyne too, called the Range. It's actually one in uh, Lake Norman as well. But okay. they got they just expensive. Uh, bullets expensive. Man, you can't get no bullets right now. That's a whole oh, other story. Yeah, yeah that's a whole <laughs> other story. Um, how many are we at now? At six. Um, and then I would say Common Market and, and, and Plaza Midwood. I love Common Market. Okay. Yeah, okay. I love that place. Yeah. It's Anything in Plaza Midwood is good. Yeah, no, nah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. man, that's a pretty good list, man. Yeah. Well, I'm bored now. I only got a few, you know, th things. But this is what happens when you get old, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but hey, it's an alternative, so I take getting old any day. For, for sure, real, for real. For sure. But nah, man, you a blessed brother, man. I do appreciate you for, for coming on, blessing the platform, man, blessing over with your knowledge. Thank you, man. Uh, Thanks man, for me. And, and y'all know how we do here, man, at Boardroom Vision, man. Stay tuned for, for the next episode, everything we're doing. Um, if you want to reach out to him uh, to even ask questions about kicks for the city, uh, anything he's doing from a real estate perspective, man, feel free. We'll drop his handles at the bottom, and y'all know where to find me, man. So, hey, this is another episode of The Kickback, and we'll see y'all uh, next time. Salute. Peace. Thank you.